I'm so thankful today to recognize that God has a plan for my life, but he has a plan for your life as well. Whether we are here in the sanctuary today or we're in cyber world watching and sharing together during our worship service. Ray, it's good to see you here this morning. Pastor Ray from our conference, uh, uh, Arizona Conference Executive Secretary. He'll be sharing also this afternoon during our seminar dealing with how to give a Bible study. Last week, we began our series on the kingdom of God by dealing with the idea that God's kingdom is like a kingdom. We talked about the fact that, that God is the only one, is the only king of the kingdom. Uh, he is the, uh, the uh, in this own, excuse me, in this world, whoops. Okay. Guys, I'm going to have to change something here. We're, we're struggling with making things work, and different computers don't always work the same. So I'm going to skip the PowerPoint. I'm going to use it for my use here, but we're not going to do PowerPoint for you guys. My apology, but I'm, I'm, I, I believe it'll go fine. I've got to wait for a moment to come back up. But the bottom line is this, folks. The kingdom of God is something that is unique and special. We recognize that earthly kingdoms, this is a review of last week, we realize that earthly kingdoms, the king is in charge. He can place you in a position of, of development and growth. He can give you some land. He can give you a house to live in, but he can also then turn around and give it to somebody else whenever he pleases to do so because everything is owned by him. How many of you have a car that you try to park in your garage if you have room for it there? How many of you have a home to live in? In a kingdom, so to speak, it does not belong to you. It belongs to the king. And the unique thing I have learned to have so much appreciation for is in the kingdom of God, it's okay and safe to leave things in his care, in his hands, because in so doing, we know that he will provide for us in every way we need provision. And as a result of that, all of our needs are cared for. Breakfast, lunch, and supper transportation to the doctor's office, to the hospital, opportunity to share together as a church family. We, we love and know and appreciate one another. Bottom line is it all belongs to God. And I praise God for that. We recognize that as the king rules the kingdom... Uh, that the problem is, is that if the king is in the wrong attitude or has the wrong perspective, it can become literally a hell on earth. I hope I'm okay saying that here this morning. It can become a very difficult time for everybody if there's not a good king. Because he does have complete authority. He does own everything, but with the kingdom of God, we know that he takes care of his people. His subjects praise and revere and honor him because he cares for everything. We know the story in, in Scripture, and this is in review quickly of last week. We know that there was war in heaven because Lucifer wanted what God had. Adam and Eve were drawn into this as well after they were created. They were created to rule over the earth, but entered Lucifer, and Lucifer found himself desiring to be the Lord of this world. And so ate, Eve ate that proverbial apple. Adam also ate the fruit because he uh, has noted that Eve had eaten it. And then immediately comes something very unique, a promise of a redeemer. And as a result of the promise of a redeemer, we have the cross of Jesus Christ. Many years later, yes, but the gift of salvation, not just offered, but God himself died on the cross for your sin and mine. 
And I so frequently in my own personal prayers say, Lord God, I do not deserve it. I've done nothing to own it. I can't earn it. I can't buy it. I can't work toward it. But it is a free gift, and I praise God today for his gift of salvation. We were born separated from God because of Eden. But God gave his sons life for our salvation. And so the kingdom of God this morning is like a child. Now, Scripture that was shared from Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 5, states at that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? They were arguing. They were talking back and forth. They couldn't get along with this thing. They each were, were vying for that number one position. Even clear down through the time of the, of the last supper that Jesus had with his disciples. They were vying for that position. Is it going to be me? Is it going to be me? People vying to sit next to Jesus at this special Passover uh, feast. And Jesus knowing all along, guys, you got the wrong idea. That's not what this is all about. So here in Matthew 18, which I find interesting, because Matthew 18 is known for what? Anybody who's heard about Matthew 18 should know this. What, what is the theme that we normally use Matthew 18 to deal with? Yes, how to deal with conflict. Something wrong happens. The number one thing to do is to go and talk with that person. Number two, if that doesn't work, you take somebody with you. Number three, if that doesn't work, you bring it before the, the church board, so to speak. If that doesn't work, you bring it before the church family. And, and you deal with things as they need to be done, but it's done one step at a time. And it's in the introductory context of that that Jesus says, at that time the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And then Jesus called a little child. Where is the youngest child worshiping with us today? The youngest child. Raise a hand, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. You're, you know your little one is, is little? Uh, we have a little one here. How old is he? He is four years old, okay? Any, anybody have a child here that's younger than four years of age? Okay, how old? Two and a half? Anybody here with a child younger than two and a half? I know that uh, uh, Pastor Ed has a little one here that is how old? One year old, and I believe that he is being cared for right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 you never know what's going to happen. I don't know whether I didn't smile right or something, but I sure brought out a response from him a little bit ago, didn't I, during children's story. But the idea is this, folks. Jesus says that we should become as little children. And as a result of that, uh, we, we recognize that it did it again to me, guys. I don't know, my wife and I are going to have to do something about this computer business. The guys back in the audiovisual booth ha harassed me about it as well, and I'm sure I deserve it. But the idea is this. Children are unique and special. Now, let's talk about some, some qualities of children for, for a few moments. What kind of negative qualities you see in little ones? What's one quality? Somebody selfishness anything else that oh, liars whoo okay because they only see things from one perspective right their perspective and it may be intentional and it may not even be intentional they may not even have the the wherewithal to know and understand whether it's really uh, wrong or not they're just simply blatantly blasting it out there this is what it is but it may be negative as well they may purposely be saying something is not true thinking that yeah you know, I'm young, uh, everybody loves little ones and beguiles us and they'll be beguiled and think that I'm, I'm right and everything's going to be okay. Oh boy, that brings a memory to me. 50 cent piece on the toilet tank. Everybody here know what a toilet tank is? <laughs> That's a dumb question, isn't it? <laughs> it's that, that water reservoir that's above the toilet, and when you flip this little lever, water comes whooshing down from there and takes whatever is in that uh, commode and washes it away. Good thing, right? Okay. Well, I don't know exactly all the details because I've forgotten, but I was pretty young. 
And when I went in to use the, re- the bathroom or a shower or bath or whatever, I don't remember what it was, there was a 50 cent piece on the toilet tank. And all I could think about, that would be 50 pieces of black licorice. <laughs> Do I have any people that agree with black licorice with me this morning? Oh, we got a few faithful people here this morning. I, I, I laud you in your honesty and your joy of some of the finer things in life. And all I could see was 50 pieces of black licorice. I do remember that. And so I slipped it into my pocket. And my family accosted me about it. Now, that's maybe a big word. My family accused me of taking it. Smaller word, easier to understand. And I would not admit it. And finally, they gave up. It was years later that I had the opportunity to to confess. But integrity is so important. Some of the positive things about children, however, is that as they are developing and growing, we recognize that they, uh, as individuals, have specialness about them. They, they, They have positive things as well. What are some of the positive things you see about little children? Trust. Anything else? Yes, these things are so important because Jesus is asking for those kinds of qualities to be a part of your life and mine. Now, I can't speak for the rest of you guys, but I have no memory of my first exposure to this world. And I don't think anybody here does. But the uniqueness of that doctor or whoever it is that delivers that child seeing that little one for the very first time, a mother and a father seeing that little one for the very first time, I can remember so clearly in my mind as little Tammy is placed in my arms. And you know what I thought at that moment in time? Nobody dare do anything to harm this little girl because I will, do I dare say it? You know what's going through my head, don't you? Because you probably had some of the same kinds of thoughts when your little ones were placed in your arms. Total innocence, never done anything wrong. Yes, the day comes, or the time comes, the hour comes when when they're desiring food. And they let you know that they're hungry. Maybe they're not even aware that they're hungry, but but they, 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 something's going on, and they, and they, they let you know that something's going on, and you have to guess. Is it because the diaper's pinching them? Is it because um, maybe it's too cold in the room or too hot? Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of possibilities. And then suddenly you say, duh, the child's hungry. Or, duh, the child needs to be burped. Am I right? But everything that happens to that little one, we are responsible for because they cannot do it themselves. There are many animals today that don't have to be messing around with that kind of stuff because they, they're given natural ability to do things. All right? Well, when it comes to little ones, human beings, the natural thing, instinct, is to, is to, to eat, okay? To pee, okay? It just naturally comes. They just, they just do it. Their, their muscular abilities are not like they are in an adult, And I have just a little word for you guys this morning. Pee-pee dog knows how to do her business outside now. And so I've learned a little bit about about, about muscular ability to, to, to command certain things. And just like an adult comes to the point, a child becoming an adult comes to the point where they are also able to, to control some of these kinds of things. And as a result of that, we, we find ourselves in a position where we find us as adults recognizing that we need to develop and to grow. And so the question I want to bring to you right now is, how can we become a child of God? Something happens. Set the tone here. Something happens between birth 
And a few years down the line, should be going this way, shouldn't I, because of the direction you're focused on, something happens from the time of birth to a point in time where we learn how to tell things that aren't true. We learn how to be selfish. We learn how to, to, to be involved and do things we shouldn't be involved in doing. But God is saying to us, told Nicodemus that he must be born again. And unless he is, the kingdom of God is not a part of his life. So Nicodemus pops off with, well, how can a man or a woman re-enter his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus is saying, listen, come on, Nicodemus, that's not what we're talking about. What Jesus was really talking about is how is it that you and I can come to a point where we have that innocence of our little ones. That innocence where, where we are totally dependent upon God. Coming to the point where we recognize within ourselves that we, without God, we are nothing. But notice what it says in John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, Jesus, to them he gave the right to become children of God of God. And the process of becoming a child of God means that my selfishness goes away because I begin seeing what God has for other people, what God has for me, and that the only way I can survive all this stuff that happens as we're maturing and growing, that we're growing in Christ, is we have to come to the point we have full and complete trust and God, anybody here today recognize that there are things going on in your life that you cannot control and you need to trust God? All right, all right. So we're on the same page together, aren't we? We recognize that we must surrender it to God. And the thing that's crazy about this, folks, Jesus gives the right to you and to me to become children of God. But the qualification is here. He gives it to those who believe in his name. Because not everybody does. Also, I recognize today that becoming a child of God results in something here as well. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. When a mom, a dad, a grandma, a grandpa, or a sibling, or an aunt, or an uncle, hold that tiniest one for the very first time. Again, defensiveness comes right out. I will do anything and everything so this child is not harmed by anything or anyone. I'm here to protect this child. That's you and I. You and me. That's me, that's you. But God is the father of all. And he has that same feeling and desire to be there for you as he is there desiring to be there for me as well. But the problem we find is in the world, those that do not know God, it goes on here in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Those who do not know Jesus don't know how to deal with this kind of thing. Those of us who have recognized who Jesus is, what happened on the cross, that we have the gift of salvation, those of us who understand that and know that we have an advantage over everybody else, but God then commissions us to go and share with them so that they can have the same experience that you and I have. Guys, this afternoon, many ways to witness. God speaking to your heart, I pray that you will stay and come into this room. We're going to actually do it in this room. I have a feeling we're going to have too many to, to go to one of our other uh, smaller rooms. So we're going to do it in here, okay, guys? And uh, because you can make a difference in someone else's life. The world doesn't know him, but we do. God gives us the opportunity to grow and develop and share with them. 
You see, the life is changed. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's not what God gives to us, not what he gives us. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. How can a father ignore his little ones? How can a mother ignore her her child who is hungry? And I've shared this with you before. I remember so distinctly today again how disciplining Tammy when she had done something wrong and then finding out the next day that it was our son Eric instead. I had placed the hand of wisdom upon the seat of understanding. And the following day, I had to bring Tammy back into her room, put her on my lap and say, Tammy, I am so sorry and I'll never forget those eyes pooling with tears, saying, daddies don't make mistakes. Boy, is that childlike faith and trust? Children depend upon their mom and dad. Do you depend upon God? Really be thinking about this because I think that many of us as adults find ourselves so caught up in what we're doing that we do not find ourselves really depending on God. And I'm I'm admitting to you, there are things I know how to do. And I, quite honestly, I, I have a struggle inviting God to help me with those things that I already know how to do. So I don't think I'm any different than you are. You're no different than I am in that regard. If I know how to do it, I just go and do it. But we need to surrender all things to God. All things to God. But see, as a child of God, a child of God bears spiritual fruit, such as obedience, righteousness, and godliness. You can't be a child of God and live like the devil. There's a change that must happen. Just like that born again thing that Jesus talked with Nicodemus about, the change must happen. And I want to share with you, one change is not where it's at. It's an ongoing lifetime of development, growth, and change. A child of God also loves everyone. Mankind in general? The church family? And their own personal family? Now, it's easier to love our own personal family. It's not quite so easy to love some others that are not quite so loving. And sometimes we find those relationships happening within ourselves, within the church of God. You know as well as I do, there are some people that are easier to get along with than others for you, and for me as well. But entering into relationships with people with a childlike trust in God changes the way we look at people and see what they're doing. We actually come to a point of childlike maturity to realize that they are living and acting in ways that they learn somewhere, somehow, because of experiences that happened in their life. And so rather than point the finger, we need to be praying for one another, folks. We need to be praying for one another. We olders, um, maybe in some respects, people don't have so much to lose. And so it might be easier for us, but some of us are also pretty well nailed down in our own ways, and it's very hard for us to surrender and say, okay, I'm going to leave it alone. It's all right. What about our neighbors? The proverbial dog that's barking all night. Love your neighbor. What about your enemies? The one who shakes his fist at you when you accidentally cut him off on the freeway. Happened to me yesterday. Horn honking, fist shaking. What do you do? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm I'm glad he was watching because I didn't see him. Those who are enemies are very difficult to know and to love. What if Turkey and Syria happened in surprise this afternoon? Anybody in the neighborhood that 
you would think to yourself, whoa, well, I guess don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm sorry, guys. This is down where the rubber meets the road. Uh, wow, uh, you know, that, that person has been a problem in my life ever since I moved into this community. Or that person has been a struggle. They're always coming up with things that make it difficult for the church to move forward. All these kinds of things are things that we need to learn how to deal with because we need to become a child of God today because you realize, dear church family, that the kingdom of God is there for a reason. The kingdom of God is, is, is monitored, is, is, is reigned upon by the king himself, which is God, the Godhead. And God says, you can't use these things for an excuse. If you are a part of my kingdom, you need to be open and receptive to the situations and people's lives around you. Next Sabbath, we're going to talk about the kingdom is like a valued pearl. And the fourth Sabbath of February, we're going to share it together. The kingdom of God is like a fishing net. God has plans through every one of these things for us to be able to reach other people for his kingdom. That's our whole purpose of existence. I challenge myself, and I challenge you. I challenge those who are with us through, through cyberspace today. Become a child of God. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Well, you can't be a male chauvinist, you know the rest of it, as a child of God. Am I right or wrong? No, you can't. You can't be a, a, a domineering uh, woman that, that, that demands everything in certain ways. It doesn't work that way. You can't be a leader in the church that says it has to be my way or the highway. The kingdom of God is filled with people who are saying, how can we be a blessing to you? Because being a blessing to one another gives us opportunity and insight and understanding to be a blessing to others that we don't even know and may not even appreciate their actions but recognize that God has a plan for them as well because he has said, I died on the cross that all may come to repentance. Not just those of us who are wearing certain kinds of clothing today and came to a certain place to worship today, but all people. And folks, I want to ask you to be praying about something. Yes, becoming a child but also, Lord, show us ways that we can actually make inroads into this community, not surreptitiously, but in ways that will make you the king of this church and the king of this community. May God bless as we worship him, our Lord and Savior, today is my prayer.
Father God, because we are here today, you know that there's a desire on our part to have a deeper relationship with you. Lord, there's one thing in our heart that gives us an openness, a desire, a protective feeling, and that's to hold a newborn child in our arms. Unfortunately, we as adults oftentimes look at that as being weak, being susceptible, needing other people, needing to be dependent upon you. But the real bottom line is adults developing children our high school students and our college uh, graduates, every one of us needs to allow ourselves to reach back, reach back into what it would be like to have that dependence upon you, that openness to learn from, from everyone, openness to learn from your word, applying all those things to us in such a way that we can continue to become the people, the men, women, and children that you have designed us to be. We oftentimes don't think of your design, Lord. We think of our own. Lord, we are challenged today to let you show us what you want to do with us not being, not be determining what we want to be ourselves. Help us to understand that. To become children. No, not become babies again. But to have the attitude of a newborn child and develop into that person that you so desire us to be because the kingdom of heaven then belongs to us. We surrender today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.